Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. Sugar's a big issue. A lot of people consume it. The National Institutes of Health actually has said now, along with the World Health Organization, that 5% of our calories really should be the total amount that we get. Now, it's recommended that it stay at 10%, but now they're cutting it down to 5 just because of some of the new guidelines that have been put together. And, of course, when they talk about sugars, they're talking about the ones that occur in syrups, even honey, fruit juices, fruit concentrates, according to all of this, simply because of what it does to our body. And, of course, keep in mind, it raises inflammation and increases our body's um, ability for certain types of health challenges and, of course, again, increases fatigue. It's one of the toughest foods really to kick the habit up because it's so addictive, but it makes such an impact in our overall health when you do. If you've ever come completely off sugar for the most part and cut down on it in your diet, you'll notice a big difference in your overall health and the way that you feel. It really makes a big impact. So cutting down the sugar, one of the big tips, especially for dropping weight, can be a big, big deal. You want to give me a call right now. You're listening to On Call Radio. You can always call me at 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. We'd love to take your call here on the show. We're going to go to Carol right now. Hi, Carol. Calling about my four-year-old son. He has Soto's syndrome, and he has a very weak digestive system. And I just wanted some advice on what to do about that. Um, his pediatrician has him on um, Miralax. I'd like to um, eventually get him off the Miralax. I uh, have him on a um, multivitamin that you mix it's it's a powder that you mix with water, and I just recently started him on an egg-based ba- protein supplement as well. So I just wanted some advice to see if there was something we could do to help help him digest things better. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, that's the key. Digestion, as you know, is everything. And the probiotics are really good, and you can get a powdered probiotic. If you want to start adding those into some of his foods, that can make a big, big difference. And, of course, it'll increase immune system, too, but it'll help with elimination. The digestive enzymes, I really like those, and you can get those at your local health food store, and they come in little capsules. And for kids, they even have in, like, the powdered versions where you can take those and, and put them into yogurt or applesauce or whatever, mix it up, and they won't even know it's in there. But that is a real big component and is so powerful for supporting the overall digestive system. I mean, that is a big, big key. So looking at both of those. Now, from a food source perspective, depending on how picky of an eater he is, you can start adding in, of course, fruits and vegetables. I like to get a blender, like a Vitamix blender, and you can put the vegetables, mix some fruits in there, and make some purees, even make some shakes. You know, It's great to tell kids, hey, this is your shake, and you start making them on a regular basis, maybe even twice a day it's what they get, and they start enjoying their, their foods, and they drink them. I mean, blending is a great way to go to for the for the kids to get their their nutrition. I'm a big fan of that. I mean, juicing is cool too, but I like blending the best. And by doing that on a regular basis, typically they can get the kind of uh, nutrients and nutrition that they need to really take things to the next level. So, again, those are some great tips I think that could be quite helpful. Keep me posted how that goes, especially the digestion with kids uh, can be a challenge for sure, especially – getting them to eat the kind of foods that you want them to. All right, let's go to Ken now on the phones. Hi, Ken. Yeah, yeah I've got uh, what they call an anopathy of my feet, the nerves, I guess, or something. Or I have severe pain in my feet, and uh, I have a buildup of some calcium buildup in the blood vessels, too, in my feet. I was wondering what I can do for that problem and how to, so that I can sleep. It's hard to sleep at night sometimes with the pain from the, the nerves, I guess. And um, I was just wondering about that. Well, okay. The feet themselves, depending on what you have going on, and, and what it sounds like to me could potentially be some nutritional deficiencies, number one. And then also maybe some issues that could be coming from the lower back. And so a couple of things I would do just right out of the gate, you, you definitely want to have someone take a look at your lower back and your spine because the gait of our hips and lower back is it's very important. It affects the feet and the lower body in, in a great way. So having a chiropractic physician or an osteopathic physician, a D or a DC, 
take a look at that, then they can put it together and come up with a good solid game plan. That's what I would do first. So you build from there. And then the second piece that you want to look at that is really important is the nutritional side. And a lot of times on the nutrition, it could be something as simple as vitamin B6 or even vitamin B5, both of those. And there can be some blood testing done to check those out and see exactly what those numbers are. But that's where I would start. That's the first key to be able to build and figure out, you know, what's happening. Because the reality is there's there's multiple areas of the body that could be it, it could be focused on mental aspect, the brain chemistry. It could be on the physical side and it could be on the chemi- chemistry, the nutritional side. So you have to look at all three categories to figure out where the actual key is. And once you figure that out, because the body is so multifaceted, uh, then you can start piecing those parts of the puzzle together. And they're all three equally important. So you have to check that out. All right. Keep me posted. 888 7272 That's 888 7272 Whatever you're struggling with, realize if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's all about lifestyle. We've got Sam in Texas that writes in. He says, what do I do with lower energy levels? I'm struggling with that over the last two to three months. I wake up in the morning tired. And then my energy progresses throughout the day. And that's common. We actually hear that a lot. And what do you do for that? You have to get tested, I think, but it's probably adrenal function. The adrenal glands are the body's stress glands are these two little glands that sit above the kidneys. And with the adrenals, one thing you want to focus on in, in building them back up is you can look at some of the vitamins can do that, but really rest does that. I know that's kind of tough, especially when, People are having to work two and three jobs now to make ends meet. But getting proper rest on a regular basis is an absolute key. And and rest comes in the form of obviously sleep that you get at night, but it's taking a full day off a week and just winding it down and just letting your body recharge and regroup. And whatever that means for you. I mean, it may just be hanging with your family and but you know, shutting your cell phone off, not feeling like you have to work. All of that makes such a big difference in recharging the adrenals. Anything you read about adrenal health, we'll talk about the overload of stress that we're under just in life in general and what we have to do to kind of recharge and regroup. So whatever that means for you, that's going to be important. And then, of course, stay away from a lot of the processed foods, the sugar-based foods, the flours. All of that can play a big role in tearing down the adrenals. So staying away from those foods is going to really, really help build everything back up. Plenty of water every single day. Half your body weight in ounces of water every single day. Coming up, more information to empower your health in your life. Also, got some groundbreaking research that I want to talk about. And we're going to be taking more of your calls. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University. And I've taken it ever since my college years. And it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride, I've moved over to using concrete. And it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on Walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance, your strength, and your recovery and your immune system get boosted today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at mchipnetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Go to oncallradio.com. Whatever you're struggling with, great or small, realize if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's all about lifestyle. And the choices we make today can and will determine, of course, 
kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care that we talk about here on the show, make sure to check out the website. We've got incredible team members that can help you find a provider in your area that's growing every single day, that can coach you, that can help you uh, really go to that next level with your health and with your life. And we're focused on that to, to grow and help you make a major impact on this show. That's what it's all about. Go to the phones and talk with Tony. Hi, Tony. The question that I have is concerning arthritis or gout in the knuckles of your hand, uh, the fingers. Okay, so talking about gout and, and getting gout, no matter where it is, if it's in the knuckles of your fingers or if it's in your toe or if it's anywhere in the body, it can be quite painful. So that's something you have to be cautious with and be a little bit be careful because, again, what gout is, it's the inability of the body to break down proteins. And so you've got, you're dealing with uric acid crystals that build up in the joints. And when that happens, of course, the pain is there, the inflammation is there. But what's the root cause? I mean, we've got medications that can help reduce the pain, cut down the inflammation. But I think most people really want to get to the root of it so it, st- so it stops. And that's where you really have to, that's where you really want to start is that at that point right there. So making sure that you, your body gets everything that it needs is going to be a big, big key. And that's what I would focus on at this point. So with that said, you want to do a couple of things. You want to focus mainly on getting the right kind of foods in. Cut out the inflammation-based foods, inflammatory foods. Focus on chicken, fish, beef, or eggs. Of course, these are proteins, but you got to be able to break them down. And that's the issue in the first place. So what do you do? Well, there's what's called proteolytic enzymes. And it's made from bromelain, which is in pineapple. But these proteolytic enzymes will actually get your body to the point where it will break down your foods rather than just maybe 15 to 20%, which is pretty average for most people's digestive tract up to about 80 or 90%. The proteolytic enzymes are fantastic. And you take them about an hour after a meal. And, of course, you can use pineapple, but, when the, of course, the supplements have an, a higher level of extract in them. Another natural way to, to, to add to your food sources uh, are apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is just a, a fantastic way to go to really add in everything that you need. So, again, it's a big key with your overall health, making sure you get the right kind of nutrition in on a regular basis. But that's it's all about breaking down the proteins. For the uric acid, so the apple cider vinegar, a couple tablespoons with each meal, it'll help break it down. And then, of course, once you get your good bacteria up in the digestive tract and you start getting the body functioning a little bit better, that's where you're going to notice much more of an impact, and you'll be able to, to see quite the difference. All right, 888 282 Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give me a call right now or go to the web. Binge drinking is a hot topic. A lot of people do it, and they, they're they saying now, if you are a binge drinker, you can shorten your life. If you're drinking, consider it moderate or overall. Many studies talk about moderate drinking, and they've delved into new effects. And they've done some studies at the University of Texas in Austin, and they found that among moderate drinkers, we found that those who binge and have double the odds of dying within the next 20 years compared to those who don't binge. So the researchers analyzed data from a larger study focused on about 400 adults between the age of 55 and 65 who were moderate drinkers. And for the male participants, that meant they downed no more than four alcoholic beverages a day and no more than about 14 drinks per week. So it's pretty interesting. So look at your numbers compared to that. Of the total group, the scientists said that about 372 moderate drinkers spread their drinking out over time, while 74 showed periodic episodes of heavy drinking. So the researchers also factored in socioeconomic issues such as gender and marriage status, and recent health issues included diabetes, heart issues, obesity, and physical activity levels. So they said during these studies they found that the shortening of the lifespan was quite interesting. About 25% of moderate drinkers report having these binge drinking habits. So again, you want to balance everything out. If you do drink alcohol, don't just drink and get hammered, right? And do it two or three times a week. If you're going to have a drink, have a drink, but don't, just, you know, be cautious with it. It is, alcohol is not a free for all. 
there are effects of what it does to your body. It can impact your health in a negative way, and you have to be careful with it. It's not just something you can just do and, and think and say whatever. You know, on a regular basis, keep it to about maybe two drinks a week and spread them out. Don't do it every day. That's for sure. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call. You're listening to On Call Radio. Canada is always been known for pretty good health. But I think something from America might be creeping up into Canada. A new study reports that obesity rates in the company in the country has tripled in less than three decades. This estimates more than one in five Canadians will be obese by year 2019. So researchers, they're now saying they reviewed health surveys dating back to 1985. And they looked at their overall percentage. They found about 18% of Canadians were obese, up from about 6%. So it's almost doubled in a couple of decades. Almost 36% of the people in the United States are obese, which means they have a body mass index, a BMI, of 30 or more. So, of course, the BMI is measured between the body fat based on height and weight. So it's interesting. They did these studies in the, in the uh, Newfoundland, Labrador, New Brunswick. And they said that obesity is, cl- is categorized as class 1, 2, and 3, and 3 being the most severe. And during this period, they're saying that the, study, the, the rates of their, of their people in Canada are going up tremendously. So 35% they found in British Columbia. So we've got to jump in Canada and make a difference, too. It's not just America, even though we are the most obese country in the world. We've got to jump in and make Canada a difference. And, of course, we're on some stations up there in Canada. So Canada... We're doing everything we can to help you. Coming up, more information to empower your health. Give us a call. Don't go anywhere. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Go to OnCallRadio.com. Food for the day, one of my favorite times of our show. Of course, food either brings health to the body or it takes health out of the body. Depends on how you look at it. But our food is powerful, and what we do every single day with our foods can make all the difference in the world. So you want to make good choices, and the body doesn't know the difference between good, or between baked chicken or fried chicken. You know that. doesn't know the difference between French fries and broccoli, but we do. And so your body is going to make what you give it. So if you put good food in, you're going to make, guess what, good cells. You put junk food in, guess what, you're going to make junk cells. So pretty simple, kind of common sense, isn't it? So that's what we want to focus on. That's why I talk about our foods. Foods are powerful. And, of course, they give us all of the benefits that we need if we make the right kind of choices. And one of my favorite foods we're going to talk about today, they're called blueberries. The blueberries are amazing simply because of the health benefits that they do have. They're touted as one of the world's healthiest foods, and rightfully so. Most of the health research on blueberries involves phytonutrient content, anthocyanins, which is a colorful antioxidant pigment, that gives the foods their wonderful shades of different colors are loaded in these little guys. And the anthocyanins are powerful. They've got flavanols and other phenols that contain like resveratrol, which we've heard about in grapes. They're loaded in blueberries. So there's a lot of good benefits for blueberries. Just by eating a cup of them a day can provide to your overall health. Number one, it's got a lot of antioxidant support. So for oxidative stress, which hits us, in every aspect of our lives, especially uh, from our environment, the toxins in our environment. So we found that the oxidative stress actually can help tremendously. And we've got to focus on building up our cardiovascular system. And so strengthening the cardiovascular system is a big, big key. So, for example, there's new evidence that the damage to muscles, of course, following overly taxing exercise can be reduced through the consumption of blueberries. So they help repair the muscle tissue. And also, there's also evidence, strong evidence, actually, uh, at protection for the nervous system. So you think about your nerves, 
and your overall nervous system, it's a big, big deal. And then antioxidant protection for blood sugar effects. So if you deal with diabetes or hypoglycemia, it can help stabilize blood sugar levels. The cardiovascular benefits are pretty strong, too. There's a lot of support in the many different pathways for cardio support that are so striking for the blueberry research. In the repeated studies of blueberry consumption and blueberry intake, they showed that it can raise the HDL cholesterol and lower the triglycerides. And at the same time, the blueberry intake has been shown to help protect against the blood components like the LDL cholesterol. So from oxygen damage, that could lead to eventual clogging of the blood vessels. The protection has also been shown for the cells lining the blood vessel walls to be very protective. So again, this is one to two couple of blueberries a day can give us these kind of benefits. Also, nitric oxide, which is a big deal for cardio protection, the blueberries can actually help with nitric oxide. So again, that's very protective to the cardiovascular system. A lot of times they've been using amino acids that can do that, but of course now we found that blueberries can. Pretty powerful. And it helps to regulate blood pressure too. So if you deal with blood pressure issues at all, and you're dealing with blueberries, and you you don't eat blueberries, start eating them because it can make a big, big difference in your overall health. Cognitive benefits, too, that's another one. So a lot of the new exciting areas of research with blueberries in the area of cognitive benefits, one study involved older adults with an average age of about 76 years. They did a study with 12 weeks of daily blueberry consumption. It was enough to improve scores on two different tests of the cognitive function, including memory. While the participants in the study consumed blueberries in the form of juice, three-quarters of a pound of blueberries were used to make each a cup of juice. Powerful. So the lab and animal research studies on blueberry intake suggest that a large part of this cognitive protection is most likely due to the nerve cell protection from oxygen damage by the blueberries and a vast array of antioxidant nutrients. So, again, a lot of great benefits from that. For sure. It's got a lot of great blood sugar benefits, too. So persons diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and insulin resistance have a special challenge, really, with respect to blood sugar balance. In many cases, persons that are diagnosed with obesity also have a special challenge maintaining a balanced blood sugar level. So it's simple, really, to manage that. So your lower uh, glycemic index. So if you look at the glycemic index, it's just a number or a rating scale of all the different carbohydrates. Like, for example, blueberries and all that score down around 30. But a baked potato might score around 65 or 70. So it's important for if you're dealing with blood sugar-related issues at all that you want to eat foods, carbohydrates particularly, that are lower on the GI scale. And blueberries, they hit that, and they help to regulate blood sugar levels. They're really, really good for eye health, too. So one key that you want to look at with blueberries is the overall eye health. I mean, the retina of the eye is this unique place in our body, and it has such a a, a sensitive area, really, and oxidative stress can really go after it. But if you're eating foods that will be eye protective, so to speak, then that can make a big difference. And, of course, not only just having protection on the eyes, which is really important, but but actually looking and, and getting the right kind of nutrition in on a regular basis that can protect the eyes as well. Now, there's a lot of anti-cancer benefits to this too. So a lot of the, the cancer type it, things that we need to be concerned about, the types of cancer that already study with respect to blueberry intake include breast cancer, colon cancer, esophageal cancer, and cancers of the small intestine, all of these play a role and have to be watched and monitored. So there's some tips on blueberries. It's one of my favorites. I use them in smoothies almost every day, and I think it's just powerful, a great tool to add in your arsenal, (laughs) if you will, to to build and make your body as healthy as possible. You're listening to On Call Radio. You give us a call, 888-283-7272. We take your calls live here on the show, and, of course, you can go to the website, And if you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care that we talk about, just go to the website. You can find all kinds of information there. And our team members call the number, and they'll be able to help you with whatever you may need. Let's go to the phones and talk with Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. I was diagnosed with transverse mellitus in July of 2011. It's a virus in my spine. 
Um, since then, I've suffered esophageal spasms and, and biliary colic. I have a lot of pain with the esophageal spasms. And I was just wondering, you know, I'm, I, the doctor's not giving me any options of what I can do for it other than um, the stuff you put underneath your tongue for heart disease, you know, for heart attacks. And I just need some input on that because I'm in a lot of pain. I end up in the emergency room a lot of times from the esophageal spasms. My goodness, I know that's that's a real tough challenge. A lot of people actually struggle with that. And if if the doctors haven't looked into this, I would definitely have them look into the minerals and the mineral deficiencies that could potentially be there. That usually is a pretty it's a pretty strong factor of what's going on. And if you have them take a look just at the deficiencies and and build on that, they can probably figure out what might be happening. That's the first thing that you want to do. Now, the second piece is, of course, to check on your vitamin D levels. I'm a big advocate of vitamin D3 because I don't think we get enough. We don't. And we're finding that out more and more in a lot of the studies that are coming about. So getting your vitamin D3 levels checked on a regular basis to make sure the numbers are good and the numbers are strong is something that you definitely want to look into. So I would I would double check and get with your doctor, have them do a vitamin D3 test and see exactly what those numbers are, and then build from there, all right? And that will probably get you the help that you need because the esophagus, I mean, it's just like anything else. I mean, there are nerve uh, that are nerves that can potentially be involved in that, but you want to also make sure the minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all that is balanced. And once you get that balanced out, typically that can help, okay? 888 7272 give us a call or go to the web. Go to oncallradio.com. Let's go to Hank now. Hello, Hank. Calling in regards to how they felt about testosterone replacement therapy. Well, my thoughts on that with testosterone therapy, first I just want to tell you that it's fine if you want to do that. No worries, no issues. But one key about it with testosterone in any kind of therapy is that once you jump in, you're in. Because the body, for example, if you've stopped producing testosterone that well, and you're just, it's just not, your body's not producing it very well, once that takes place and you start taking a replacement, whether it's the pellets or the creams or the injections, there's what's called negative feedback in the body. The body, for whatever reason, lowered its production of the hormone, and now you're going to start taking hormone from somewhere else. It will continue to not produce as much. As a matter of fact, it'll, it'll even get less and less. So... You have to figure out a way to manage that, and you have to fill out a way, figure out a way to uh, to kind of make that happen. So I would encourage you, in the middle of all, in the middle of all that, to to really build a solid game plan of ways to increase your own testosterone levels first before jumping down that route. I'm not saying the hormone therapy is bad. You just want to push your body to make its own as easily as possible. So the ways to do that. 30% of your diet in healthy fats, almonds, walnuts, cashews, avocados. And then you can look into, again, exercise with weight training, proven with all the research at least three days a week with 30 minutes of high-intensity type weight training or resistance type training. And then there's some herbs out there that help, tribulus, maca root, ashwagandha, zinc. Those Look into some of those. Talk to your folks at the health food store and look at those levels because all of that is very, very important to building those testosterone levels and getting them where they need to be. So many of our lifestyle factors matter. Stress is a big key too, but those three that I mentioned are the top. Coming up, more information to empower your health. You're listening to On Call Radio. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 
7272, welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Go to teamlifestyle.com. We can help you along the way to go to the next level with your health and with your life. Now, so many people are struggling with body fat and they struggle with weight loss. And it's a big topic. And I'll tell you, one of the topics that we get into in losing the body fat are finding ways to do it. Now, cortisol, this is what I want to hit on. There's so many aspects of weight loss that we can talk about, but one is cortisol. It's a stress hormone that's produced by the adrenals. And when cortisol levels are up in the body, and this happens due to poor diet, so if you eat a lot of processed foods, drink a lot of coffee, drink, eat a lot of sugar, you're going to raise cortisol levels all throughout the day. It's, it's a normal uh, part of the physiology of the body. When cortisol levels go up, of course, your ability to store body fat around the midsection goes up, which is not a good thing. And, of course, you're going to decrease lean muscle tissue. That's not a good thing either. So getting to a place where you can manage your overall body system and you can get your body functioning at a better level, that's going to be an absolute key. So I want to encourage you to begin to focus on getting cortisol level. It's like cortisol management (laughs) would be a good topic. And the way to lower cortisol levels, you want to get plenty of rest. I would rest one full day a week. You can exercise five, six days a week if you want to, but just keep the duration of it lower. So the duration of your exercise routine should be around no more than about 45 minutes tops. And that's including cardio and weights, no matter how you mix and match it. To really make an impact, you have to keep it at a low level. You can't be maxing it out. You've got to keep it at at a very low level. So. That should be a big focus. Now, the other key, too, that is very important, I think, for, for each person to follow with keeping cortisol levels low is is drinking plenty of green tea. Green tea has got – it's just one of those superfoods. The more I study green tea, of course, I drink it every day. But the more I study it, the more it's just like – it seems like there's constantly new things that it does, and it just helps our body in so, so many different ways. Green tea actually helps lower – cortisol levels and it's got it works like a component called phosphatidylserine and this substance with the big funny name phosphatidylserine can be quite helpful at supporting the body and making a big difference as far as cutting down the the cortisol levels so drinking just eight ounces uh, of green tea every single day can help lower cortisol levels so again if you're looking at dropping belly fat that's a great way to go triple eight two eight three seven two seven two that's triple eight two eight three 7272. You're listening to On Call Radio. Also, if you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, focuses on nutrition and lifestyle based care, call the same number. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, 888 283 7272, and we can get someone to help you right there in your area. All right, let's go now to Reba. Hi, Reba. When someone's taking medication that causes um, upper body fat and um, belly fat. Are there any vitamins or anything that can be taken, or that can, you know, decrease that or slow it down? Yeah, there there actually is. I mean, with with body fat, you always want to think there's some basics that you always have to understand, and and getting your body fat levels in check, knowing where they are, and managing that. It all comes down to food that you take in, the kinds of foods. And the, and the timing of the foods, too. For example, remember, carbohydrates increase insulin, and insulin is a storage hormone. So if you were to eat high levels of carbohydrates with a ton of fat, you're going to store more body fat. But if you eat maybe if you eat fat with low amounts of carbohydrates, you're probably not going to store that much fat at all. And your body can actually utilize that fat in other ways. So timing of your nutrients, the way you eat your nutrients, is all very helpful. And that's really what you want to focus on when you're looking at body fat levels. Now, I'll tell you some really quick tips that are very, very helpful uh, to look at, especially with body fat levels. One, I talk about green tea, and that's always a, a big topic as far as cutting down cortisol levels, decreasing belly fat. And that's the one thing about green tea is it targets belly fat. But for the hips and the thighs, getting some blood testing done, I'm telling you, it, this is the key. There are three estrogens. And if you understand any kind, anything about metabolism, if you, if you can get your doctor to test all three estrogens, many times you can find the link 
of why your body is storing excess body fat. So the estrogens, you've got estrone, estradiol, and estriol. These three store body fat in different areas of the body. And so finding out which area that it's storing the different uh, types of body fat in, that is such a key component to figuring out this whole puzzle. And so that's what I would do. Get them to run that test, and then you'll be able to find out some really good information on what to do, especially with where the body fat's being deposited and how it's being deposited. That's a big key. 888 Let's go to Ellen. Hi, Ellen. They want to do a hip replacement on me. I'm, I turned 60 in January. Um, it's the left hip, and it's aggravating the, uh, what you call the uh, sciatic nerve in the back now, down my leg. Uh, I was thinking about having uh, or find a, a hospital or a place that uh, can rebuild your cartilage. You know, they they take in uh, cells or something like that and put it back in to rebuild. Is there anything like that going on? You know, I don't mind being a candidate for it. I just don't want the surgery. I'm with you. And, yeah, there is there is pretty good research going on right now about the, about the, the different chemicals and stem cells and how they're re, rebuilding a lot of the cartilage and whatnot for the joints. You might want to check out some of the research articles that are online. Some of the bigger hospitals and research groups, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, are doing some research behind that. So check into that for sure. But your diet is going to be a big key. And I would get multiple opinions before you ever jump into a hip surgery. It's a pretty big surgery. And also look at dropping your weight. That's a big key first. Hopefully they talk to you about that. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together we can impact and transform the health of our lives, our friends, our families, and our community. Listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora. For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.